What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another Pitching Ninja's Filthiest Pitches of the Day. Remember, before we get to those pitches, hit that subscribe button. Join Ninja Nation. And now, without further ado, here are my filthiest pitches of the day. I'm going to start with Aaron Ashby, who gave up no earned runs in four and two-thirds innings. He did give up five unearned runs, but we're not going to count those. He had these wicked sliders, nasty sinker, and dirty changeup working. Jose Barrios had another good outing. He had six strikeouts in seven innings, giving up only one run, thanks to his wicked curveballs, his two-seamer, and his four-seam fastball. And here's an overlay of his fastball and curveball, and you can see what makes that so tough to hit. Barrios has pitched well in July, with 42 strikeouts and 36 innings and a three ERA, so hopefully he's turned his season around. If you saw my segment on Barrios before the game on Peacock, you know that he switched sides of the rubber that he throws on. He was throwing from the first base side in June, and now he's back to throwing from the third base side. And it seems like that move has allowed his curveball to maintain its sweep and increase Barrios' effectiveness. Ty Walker had four strikeouts in five and two-thirds innings. Thanks to his splitter and fastball, his ERA this year, 279. Merrill Kelly was brilliant. He had eight strikeouts in seven innings, giving up no runs. Quietly, his ERA this year is 287. And I love this overlay of Kelly's curveball and cutter. You always hear fans yell at hitters, why did you take that pitch? It was in the zone. Well, here you can see why. You can see that curveball and cutter in the same exact plane, but that curveball drops to the dirt and that cutter maintains its plane into the strike zone. So Harris was thinking that it was another curveball and was going to end up in the dirt, but it ended up being a cutter and catching the zone. Max Fried was also brilliant. He gave up no runs in seven innings with five strikeouts thanks to his fastball, his slider, and his beautiful curveballs. Max's ERA this year, 2.58. George Kirby had seven strikeouts in four innings thanks to his fastball and curveball. He was outdueled by Jake Odorizzi, who had eight strikeouts in seven innings, giving up only two hits thanks to these splitters. Sean Manaya had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up only two runs, thanks to his elevated fastballs and changeups. Aaron Nola was his usual filthy self, with eight strikeouts in six innings, giving up only one run, thanks to his curveballs and his fastball. Josiah Gray had six strikeouts in five innings. He did give up four runs and was outdueled by Andre Pallante, who had eight Ks in eight innings of scoreless ball. And look at that 96-mile-an-hour cutter he threw. Nasty. Nick Lodolo had seven strikeouts in six innings, giving up only one run, thanks to his sliders and fastball. Lodolo is going to keep getting better and better. His stuff is nasty, and his arm angle is really tough to deal with. Check out this dirty Expelliarmus breaking ball. Harry Potter would be proud. Of course, a Lodolo may be a character from Harry Potter. Austin Voth had six strikeouts, giving up no runs in five innings, and had this curveball with 3,047 RPMs. He's thrown the sixth most 3,000 RPM pitches in baseball this year. Bet you didn't know that. Shane McClanahan had a bad outing for him, which is pretty rare this year, but he did have this nasty curveball. He gave up five runs and left the door open for Justin Verlander in the Cy Young race. Tony Gonsolin moved his record this year to 12-1 with six strikeouts in five innings, thanks to these splitters and sliders. Dylan Cease remained in Cy Young contention with seven strikeouts and six innings, giving up only one run. Cease's slider is a lethal weapon. He has a 122 batting average against that slider with a 47% whiff rate, and he throws it more than he throws his fastball. And his fastball is dynamic. He was up to 99 miles an hour yesterday. Here's an overlay that shows the depth of that slider. Here's a 96 mile an hour fastball and an 88 mile an hour slider. And look at how far that slider drops. Just unhittable. Carlos Rodon was brilliant on Sunday Night Baseball. You might remember him telling me why he is so dominant. Because I just don't give a shit. I love the one thing I throw, I throw angry fastballs. And I just throw them to see if they can hit them. That's why I'm so good. Well, he brought those angry fastballs last night, along with some hellacious sliders. Here's an overlay of his fastball and slider, and you can see why he had 10 strikeouts in seven dominant innings last night. But my filthiest pitcher of the day 
That was Reed Detmers. Detmers had an outstanding combo of sliders, curveballs, and fastballs. And his curveball is one of the prettiest pitches in baseball right now. Detmers threw an immaculate inning, which is only the third immaculate inning in Angels history. And you might remember, he threw a no-hitter earlier in the year. After looking into it a little more deeply, I realized why he's been so good. It's the Pitching Ninja shirt. Remember, you too can get Pitching Ninja shirts at PitchingNinja.com. Nice subtle plug, Ninja. Now on to my filthiest relievers. Ryan Presley had these buzzsaw curveballs, 33-16 RPMs and 32-74 RPMs. Garrett Whitlock had this sick changeup. Matt Brash had this 3,000 RPM wipeout slider. Emmanuel Classe had his usual flaming cutters working. Liam Hendricks yelled this fastball into a strike. Ryan Helsley threw absolute flames again. But my filthiest reliever from yesterday was Camilo Duvall. He was totally dominant, throwing 102 mile an hour gas. And here's an overlay of his 101 mile an hour fastball and 89 mile an hour slider. Good freaking luck. And now, my pitching ninja moment of zen. While Rodon was pitching in San Francisco, Rodog was cheering him on from the bay. What is up, Ninja Nation? My picks of the day today are for Max Scherzer to have eight strikeouts or more against the Nats, and for Logan Webb to have six strikeouts or more against the Dodgers. I'm gonna parlay these two, and here's the current line. What would your picks of the day be? 